So my dad was a single parent um, growing up. I took a lot of responsibility. Um, I filled in quite a bit for roles that a mother would play, getting the boys ready for school, helping with homework, teaching them about riding a bike or, you know, etiquette and having manners. Um, he, there was no, like, support for him. He didn't get to go get food stamps. He didn't get to get public housing. Like, it was us. And I'd fight for my brothers. I was my brother's keeper is what he would call me. And, you know, Andrew was the defender. And Freddie was was our courage, you know. Um, he was the motivator. And so those were kind of the roles that we grew up with. And we had the time of our lives. Freddie had a scholarship. He was a good student. He had already had his EMT license. Like, he was on a good path. And we struggled with being in a financial position of who's going to pay for school. And he took that burden on his shoulders. And he joined the military. And I was afraid. I was more afraid of him leaving where I could control. I couldn't control him leaving that far. Um, then not but a year and a half later, here comes Andrew, right? And I think in, in all looking back, um, I don't think I would have stopped them, but I definitely would have jumped in for one more hug. I get a phone call early in the morning. It's my sister-in-law and somebody's been killed. Was it 50,000 troops in Iraq at that time? Can't, we can't be the one out of 50,000 people. Get a knock on the door, and I go to open it. They tell us that Freddie's been killed. Freddie hurts, right, like deep, but Andrew, like tears me apart. Um, I get a call, and it's my sister-in-law, Freddie's wife, Andrew's, Andrew's gone. And I'm like, oh, he went AWOL, or like, he packed his bags and decided to come on his own and was like, I'm just coming home. And they're like, no, he's, he's, he's dead. I was like, how? Like, he wasn't in a, he wasn't supposed to be in combat. Like, how did this happen? And it's like, he, he killed himself. I think I lost all my hope in those words, right? The Monica that was ever there was gone. So I was introduced to the Travis Manion Foundation. Um, I didn't realize what an amazing impact this was gonna have on my life. This person that I had lost, that I, I didn't connect with anymore, I found her stood up and gave my first CDM presentation. And as I looked out on all of those faces, I found being a sister again. Somebody asking me what to do when they're getting bullied. Somebody asking me, Miss Monica, how can I get more involved? How can I, how can I serve my community? Asking for my guidance. And I found this purpose, this fire that had been turned out was now like reignited and I suddenly found myself collecting all my siblings, having brothers and sisters and being able to see my brothers in each one of those that I help. And it's been amazing to get out and work through my grief, to put the pain into action, to do something, to make it count and ask myself, if not me, then who? Going through the airport here and, and seeing everybody there waiting for me, that feeling of when I'd come home and Freddie and Andrew would be sitting on the front porch waiting for me or standing on the sidewalk. and It's that, that joy, that empowering feeling of this is where I belong. Being able to be around other veterans and other survivors and being able to share 
Yeah, I've walked that hopeless path. I know what it feels like not to feel like you belong. Um, but you get out and you help somebody else and you take a little bit of that back. What better way to honor them, um, to make sure they're not forgotten? It's a perfect fit for me. It was the puzzle piece that was missing that I was trying to put everything else in. And to finally find it, I just, I feel whole again.